Hi, this is Robin Bremer, the author of the Kingdom Living series and the Kingdom Living Bible Study Course. And today I want to go over something that is very important to me and dear to my heart because as I minister to people, I find that this is the number one thing that sets them free. And that God said the number one thing that gets most people into trouble. And I want to start by reading Revelations 12:10. Okay, uh, this is, um, okay, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of the brethren who accused them before God day and night has been cast down and they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Okay, the accuser of the brethren. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. Uh, kind of like have like a bunch of different stuff to say so I have to figure out the best way to put it together. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses us. Now what does he accuse us, us of? <laughs> what does he accuse us of? He accuses us of breaking the law. He accuses us of sinning. He accuses you of perhaps, let me, let me tell you this, this is something that is so so important every thought in your head is not your own thought one of the things that I have been reminded of that I used to do and I haven't done for a long time is I have uh, reminded by a friend that to say uh, demons and devils I forbid you to talk to me in the first person you'll be amazed at what happens you see every thought in your head is not your own thought the devil will come to you and speak to you as though he's speaking in the first person Oh, I'm so stupid. Nobody likes me. I don't know why I keep doing that. I'm so dumb. I'm so irresponsible. I'm so lazy. That's not you. That's not your voice. You think it's your voice because it's I. But it's really the devil putting thoughts in your head. He's not going to come to you and he's not going to say things like you this and you that because you'd recognize his voice. He's going to come to you and he's going to speak to you in the first person. So one of the first things I recommend you doing is to cast down that imagination. Satan, devil, I forbid you to speak to me in the first person. Because he's going to speak to you because that is the realm where he lives. Uh, in the spirit realm and speaking to your mind, uh, your body. He can't read your mind, but he has been around for thousands of years and he knows the rhythms and the patterns, the thinking patterns of people. And he knows he familiar spirits hang out with you. They know your patterns of thinking because of what you do and what you speak out of your mouth so number one do that S say that you forbid demons and demonic to speak to you in the first person ever and you'll find out it's really funny because <laughs> sometimes they'll say you this and it's like aha I know my father's voice and another voice I will not follow you are not allowed to speak to me in the first person and I know that that's you speaking so I command I won't take that thought I command that thought to go in Jesus name and it kind of is funny sometimes because after a while you begin to realize that it's not your voice and it's so much easier to do a battle when you know what you're battling and you know who you're battling and you know the strategy of the enemy so what he does is he accuses you of breaking the law now first of all the law was never written for you unless you are a Jew the law was never written for you the Ten Commandments was never written for you it was written for the Jews and the law was written because they got so bad they needed they wanted a king they wanted rules so God gave it to them okay so the laws were written for the Jews okay and Paul even argues this all the way through in Hebrews and Romans he clearly says that and I will go I'll go over that in all a lot of my videos on my website and a lot more than I'm going to be doing so the law was never meant for you unless you're a Jew and when you're born again you are born again into the family of God and God says in Isaiah that he will put he will make a new covenant with them and this new covenant is all about the Holy Spirit and the words of your mouth and that he will not hold anything against you no more he will not hold your sin against you no more because he poured out all his wrath and all judgment against Jesus because Jesus took all of our sins now you can't say that Jesus took all of our sins from the day, you know, up until the time we were born again because 
When Jesus carried all of our sins on the cross, none of us were even born yet. It was 2,000 years ago, so all of our sins were in the future. When Jesus died for our sins, he looked down, he saw every sin that you would ever commit, and he died for all your sins. And then God poured all his wrath, his anger, and his judgment on Jesus. That's why Jesus took every sickness and every disease, because that's the result of our sin and the fall. That's why salvation and healing are one package. Jesus paid the price uh, for our sins because sin came into the world which resulted in death that brought the fall of the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, and uh, human kingdom. All kingdoms fell and sickness, disease, poverty, lack, and fear came on the earth because of the fall of man. Jesus carried all that on him on the cross so we wouldn't have to deal, it, deal with that. That is not uh, supposed to happen to us. We take authority and dominion over that. So Satan is the accuser of the brother, and what he does is he accuses us of sinning or breaking the law, which isn't even our law. And he makes us think that we're going to go to hell. A lot of people think that um, they get saved today and tomorrow they go to hell because uh, they aren't good enough. Now let me tell you this, let me warn you, the gospel is not about you. <laughs> the gospel is about Jesus. Anytime you take your focus off of Jesus and put it on your works, you're not going to hell because you didn't sin and you got to repent and you got to confess this sin and then you're not going to go to hell. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's not about you. Okay? Everything is about Jesus. Rest in His grace. Rest in His finished work. Okay? But the accuser is going to come to you and accuse you of sinning and doing something wrong and saying, God doesn't love you. Um, your prayer is not getting answered. You're not getting healed. You don't fast enough. You don't pray enough. You haven't studied the Bible enough. You haven't prayed in tongues enough. That's about you. The Bible, Christianity is about Jesus and what he did for you. Okay, so the accuser of the brethren, and look at how they win. It says, um, the accuser of the brethren is, says they overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Your word, the new covenant is all about words and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, like it says in John, Jesus said, I don't do these I speak the words and the Holy Spirit does the works. So, same thing with you. In you, you speak God's words, you agree with God, then the Holy Spirit does it. My nose itch is sorry. Okay. Um, so that is what the New Covenant is about. Your words that agree with God and the Holy Spirit doing them. So, don't let the accuser accuse you. Don't receive his accusation. Don't believe you're going to hell because you messed up once or twice or a million times. The law was there to bring us a tutor, to bring us to Christ, to show us we needed Christ. So, God still doesn't like certain things that he didn't like before, but that doesn't mean you're going to go to hell. When you're in love with somebody, when you're in love with Jesus, you're going to want to please him. When you're in love with your spouse, you're going to want to please him. The same thing here. You want to please Jesus because you love him so much, and he loves you, and it's so wonderful. And you can love because Jesus loves you. You can forgive because God forgave you. Okay, so it comes in a big circle. It's about what Jesus did for you. It's not about what you have to do to stay safe. You do the things that you do because you love Jesus. It's you you pray, you speak in tongues, you fast, you you read the Bible because it's the fruit of being in love with Jesus. It's not the root it's not the root of what you have to do to stay saved or get saved. It's the fruit. Okay. So I just want you to remember that. My name is Robin Bremer. .net is my website. Check it out, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.